I have exciting news for you. From the week of December 5th until the 15th, you will have the opportunity to win an all access lifetime membership pass to the personal development school to give yourself the gift of healthy relationships this holiday season. We will be selecting five lucky winners to receive special prizes. And all you need to do is to be subscribed to our YouTube channel, like this video, and then click the link in the description and register your email in order to be entered to win. There are also bonus points for those who comment below on how a lifetime membership to our school could really benefit them or impact their lives. So make sure you check your email on December 16th to see if you win. Again, we'll have five winners that get all sorts of different access and prizes to PDS. And if you don't hear back from us, please don't worry. Everyone who enters will also still receive a small gift for myself and the personal development school as a thank you for being a valuable member of the PDS community. And all of the details are listed in the description of this video below. Best of luck. So how we start a relationship usually ends up being the foundation of what's to come. And if we start a relationship on the right foot, if we start by expressing our needs, having good boundaries, really taking the time to vet somebody we're dating and not just jumping into a, a relationship with somebody because we have fun with them and we find them attractive, but actually going into really unpacking what we're looking for at a deeper level in relationships so we can date consciously and intentionally. All of these things contribute to massive success around dating. So in this video specifically, I wanted to highlight three major areas that anxious, preoccupied individuals sometimes struggle with their dating boundaries and three really strong boundaries to have and keep in mind and execute on that will likely allow you to have a much easier time in the dating world, more enjoyable time with dating in general. So the people will be chasing you instead of feeling like you are always the person chasing in relationships or anxiously waiting for somebody to get back to you. So the first thing that's of the utmost importance for anxious, preoccupied individuals is you have to write out your standards and your non-negotiables. And this is something that, yes, if done incorrectly, can become this like rigid checklist, but our anxious preoccupied attachment cell individuals are not really like that. They're not very rigid with their checklist and everything has to be perfect. That really has, to me, a more avoidant undertone in there. Um, and we can find more avoidant individuals really flaw finding and making sure the checklist is, is perfect. What I find with the anxious preoccupied individuals is that sometimes they struggle to actually take the time to vet for themselves what they're really looking for. And they can fall into this trap early on in dating where they're just kind of like, you know, as soon as they feel some kind of connection to somebody, they just think, oh, great. There's a spark. There's a connection. I'm going to go in head first and see what happens. And they can end up really people pleasing and trying to win over that person, the entire dating stage of relationships, rather than sitting down, getting clear, knowing what they want, knowing what their standards are, knowing what their non-negotiables are, things they're not okay with. And then honoring that so that they're not wasting their time investing and in really getting attached to somebody who may have a whole bunch of non-negotiables that they're not going to work through anyway. So I'm going to give you a few examples here before we move on to number two and three. So when it comes to standards, you know, what are things that are really important to you? And if somebody's amazing in so many other cat categories and they really are a great fit overall, but there's one standard or two standards that are not really being met you know, you might be flexible on, and then what are your non-negotiables? So to clarify some differences between the two, non-negotiables usually are the things that like, no matter what, if you got into a relationship with this person and they have these non-negotiables there, you would be betraying yourself if you dated them. Like if you committed to them and really invested in them and non-negotiables can range from things like, um, you know, let's say that you really want to have kids and somebody really doesn't want to have kids. And then you're like, let me see if they'll change their mind. Like if somebody says something like that and you still invest in them, you're investing in a huge chance that it's just not going to work out long-term or you're sacrificing this massive part of what you want in order to be with that person. It can be a whole bunch of different things for different reasons to people. It can be certain um, religious beliefs or things that are important to you religiously. It can be spiritual beliefs. It can be um, you know, things around, um, you know, for people who are vegan, you know, not dating somebody who eats meat for somebody who, um, is in a position, for example, where they find, um, that like, 
you know, growth is really important to them. Both people having a career is important. And one person says, I'm never going to want to have a career. Or if somebody's in a position where they say, you know, I'm not willing to live in this part of the world, or I'm not willing to invest in, you know, really having a healthy family unit with your in-laws. Like it's these things that are really important um, to certain groups of people or individuals. And again, if you were to jump into the relationship and pretend like it was okay that the person wasn't on the same page, it would be a massive self-sacrifice. So those are our non-negotiables. Generally, everybody has a couple um, pretty strong ones in there, and it's important to write those out. Standards are things that are very important, but you might be willing to be flexible on. Um, and those can be things like somebody who's really ambitious, somebody who, you know, enjoys personal growth, somebody who really wants to emotionally connect. Like those might be really important things for you. Those could also fall in the non-negotiable category for the record. But like, let's say, for example, we look at personal growth, you might go, you know what, they don't have to be interested in doing personal growth on their own, but I would want to know that they're willing to contribute in growth oriented conversations in our relationship. So that could be an, an example of like a flexible standard. So really taking the time to write those out. I can't stress how important this is for anxious, preoccupied individuals, because your subconscious mind is basically geared towards looking for an attachment, looking for a spark, and then not even vetting if that person has all these things that you need in other areas and then getting into a relationship with people. And then it may be at the expense of yourself in these different ways. And I've had countless conversations with APs over the years who are like, this person said they didn't want to have kids, but I thought they would change their mind or, you know, things of that nature um, that later on led to a really problematic outcome five years into the relationship or things along those lines. So that is a really important boundary to have is to set up your standards and non-negotiables and to action intentional questions to get to the bottom of them, and then to literally set boundaries with the person and leave a relationship if the non-negotiables are there, and to be advocating for your standards and the things that are important to you when getting to know somebody. Number two, and these number two and three are really about um, how to manage the vetting process for yourself. And these are hard boundaries, but they're things that are ultimately going to allow you to thrive. Number two, is to make sure that when you're dating somebody, you do not give up on the other areas of your life. Anxious, preoccupied individuals sometimes start dating somebody, get interested, and then they don't talk to their friends as much, or they don't um, you know, keep setting goals in their career, or they have poor financial boundaries with themselves because they're spending a lot of money on like trying to buy clothes to impress the person or going out to fancy dinners or taking somebody on vacation. And it's like, all of those things are great as long as they're within your boundaries. As long as you've considered these things, they're taking yourself into consideration. So really having great boundaries so that you don't get so hyper-focused. And this is really a symptom of codependency. Um, so hyper-focused on just your dating life that you forget about all the other areas of your life, right? Your friendships, family relationships, career, financial, personal growth, emotional well-being, mental areas of life, like learning, you know, physical health, you know, all those, those important areas that comprise the holistic version of yourself. Um, so really important to be mindful and stay balanced. Um, and by the way, if you are struggling with codependency and you want to check out a course for free for seven days, you can use the codependency and enmeshment course below. Um, and the boundaries course is available using that link as well, because it gives you access to all the courses and you can do a deep dive for free for seven days, um, just into those courses, into recognizing some of your codependent patterns, um, and really working through some of those dynamics. And then number three, is in order to do that and maintain your balance. Some really important tips for dating is when you first start dating, you want to ideally have your first few dates be like no more than two hours long um, because it stops you from sort of getting overly attached too quickly and allows you to ease into things and stay conscious and intentional and stay vetting somebody. And you also want to make sure that you don't get into the habit so immediately of texting every single day. Texting a little bit, like three, four times a week is a really great start for the first six weeks. Now, this is not me telling you what to do, right? If you're like, I really want to text more than that, like, you know, do what feels right for you. But I find these to be helpful parameters for anxious, preoccupied individuals to just not get attached too fast, too soon, especially if you're working on reprogramming and becoming more securely attached. So it gives you this sort of space by having those like boundaries between yourself and that person 
that space will allow you to focus on those other areas of life, to still consider yourself and your needs and your friendship and your family relationships and your career and, you know, all those different parts of you. Um, whereas sometimes when an AP gets really into like long dates right away, you know, that go on for a really long time, like seven, eight hours, sometimes that can actually overwhelm the other person of a different attachment style early on. But also, um, sometimes there can be a dynamic or situation where, um, texting all day, every day, immediately out of the gates too, can get somebody. So you can get so attached to somebody so early that that's actually really likely to burn other people of other attachment styles out. And then those people usually have like a flight response eventually when they sort of realize what their boundaries are with texting and realize that they don't feel comfortable texting that much that early. Um, or you as an anxious preoccupied may find yourself in a position where you're like so mesmerized with that person and, and thinking about them all the time throughout the day and then focusing on the text and what you're going to say back. And it can just give so much of your attention to that person too early rather than have that healthy amount of space that can allow you to take the steps to properly vet somebody, to really come in, to take the time, to ask those questions that relate to your standards, to have those discussions relating to your non-negotiables, um, and to really make sure you stay balanced and stay in a relationship to self first so that you cannot self-betray, not self-abandon and get into people-pleasing mode um, and then end up in relationships that are not working for you. So these are three really important tips and tools. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments down below. And again, if you want to check out the boundaries course, the codependency course, even the healthy dating course, it's like all the strategies for dating. It's a webinar style course. You can use that link below. It gives you access to the whole school and that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel if you are getting a lot of value and I will see you in the next video.